What's up guys? We are back and today we're going to be covering inhaled anesthetics. I personally think inhaled anesthetics are pretty easy because to begin the the mechanism of action is is unknown at the moment. Uh they have a they have a good idea for the mechanism of action of the localized anesthetics. Uh the mechanism of action of some of the IV anesthetics, but for the inhaled anesthetics it's an unknown mechanism of action, so that makes it far easier for us. We can pretty much focus on the side effects and you can almost ignore the resistance is because if you don't understand the mechanism of action, it's very difficult to ask a question on a mode of resistance. So we're going to focus on some of the main inhaled anesthetics and then look at the side effects that the USMLE step one would most likely ask about. So let's jump into this. To start off, here's the list that you really need to focus on. Nitrous oxide, desflurane, halothane, methoxyflurane, isoflurane, and enflurane. So we're going to jump into this and we're going to go one by one and look at some of the important side effects upon giving these drugs and maybe some of the indications for each. So starting with nitrous oxide, uh, I, I made a video comparing, uh, talking about the second gas effect and diffusion hypoxia. They're kind of con complex uh, concepts to understand, so check out my channel. I feel like I did a pretty good job of explaining how nitrous oxide works as a second gas uh, with, like, say, for example, halothane, or it can be any of the other ones, to assist in the effects of that anesthetic. Uh, we go into detail in that particular video on the minimum alveolar concentration, along with talking about lipid solubility and potency, and everything is explained in that. But I'm going to just talk about some of the other things besides some of those points. So for nitrous oxide, you just need to know that nitrous oxide acts as a second gas effect. What that means is nitrous oxide in particular has a very low blood gas partition, co uh, partition coefficient. All this means is that you just look at how it's written out. Like they may say blood gas partition coefficient or they'll write it like this and then write out the rest of the words. So you need to know that B is for blood solubility. Oh, excuse me, and then um, and then G is for gas solubility, so blood solubility and gas solubility. So it's treated as a fraction. Here's the blood solubility over the gas solubility. If you had an increased blood gas over gas partition coefficient, that means that this top number has to be higher than the lower number, right? So an increased blood gas solubility means that there's going to be an, a blood gas partition coefficient, excuse me, means that there's going to be an increase, that particular drug has an increased blood solubility. And an increased blood solubility, the way that an inhaled anesthetic works is that, say these are the lungs, the drug comes down when you, you know, through a ventilator or whatever, and the particular drug will then go into the alveolar areas where it will go from the alveoli into here's a blood vessel, let's say, and then here's the brain, or it can be any other tissue, but we want the uh, anesthetic to get to the brain because that's where the really the effects come into play is on the brain. So the inhaled anesthetic will go into the alveoli space and then it crosses into the blood. So then it goes into the blood, and then from the blood it goes into the tissues, and this particular tissue being the brain. Now it can also go backwards from this. So it can go from the alveoli to the blood, then from the blood back to the alveoli, or it can go from the alveoli to the blood, and then the blood to the brain, for example, and then the brain, then it goes back to the blood. But it can never do this. It can't go from the alveoli to the tissues. That does not happen. And it can't go from the tissues back to the alveoli. No, it must go through this blood area first. And a drug with an increased blood solubility means that it's soluble in the blood. So it, it tends to go into the blood area and then stay in the blood area. So it's a, it has a very difficult time ever reaching the brain uh, in a timely manner to have the effects in the brain that needs to happen. So nitrous oxide, um, in, in, for the example for nitrous oxide, doesn't have a high blood gas partition coefficient, it has a low blood gas partition coefficient. So that just means that the, the, uh, as far as the onset, so from the time you give the drug, the onset of, of action of that drug is very fast. So it has a low blood gas so partition coefficient, that means it acts fast from the time you give it, and it has a low potency. And the potency is dealing with the solubility 
in lipids of the drug. So it basically, how well the drug, when it gets into the tissues and the various fats of the body and stuff, how well does it stay in there? And the potency is all, uh, the higher the potency, the more uh, you'll see the effect at a lower concentration for that drug. So that's how that's how that potency works out. But I explain all of that uh, far more detail in my other video comparing nitrous oxide and halothane, how they work together with diffusion hypoxia and the second gas effect. So that's kind of what I wanted to say about nitrous oxide. One more really important note about nitrous oxide. So you have the second gas effect that it acts as. It has a decreased blood gas partition coefficient. I'm sorry, like a lower blood gas par uh, partition coefficient. It has a lower potency. And this particular, this is a very no, uh, important side effect you need to know for nitrous oxide. It expands closed air compartments expands closed air compartments so there's certain things in the body there's certain spaces in the body where it's a closed aired chamber that's kind of like an unusual type closed air aired off area and air can get there and it has a difficult time leaving for example in a pneumothorax in a pneumothorax like in car accidents you have that air, you basically have, like, say, punctured a hole through your chest and then into the lung, and it has messed up the air gradient, so you can have some trapped air and a messed up, basically, a diffusion. You'll have a messed up concentration diffusion with the oxygen and CO2 trans, uh, basically going in and out of the lungs. So pneumothoraxes, what if you give nitrous oxide and the patient were to have a pneumothorax and you didn't realize it, it can expand the pneumothorax and the patient can then go into respiratory failure. So that's just one example. Another one would be in the eye. Uh, there's compartments in the eye that hold, that's considered a closed air compartment. Nitrous oxide can expand that and you could lead, that could lead to blindness if you weren't aware of the patient having that situation. So that's what you need to know for nitrous oxide. Next is desflurane. The main thing to know about desflurane, it's very similar to nitrous oxide in the and it has a low blood gas partition coefficient, a low potency. But what's unusual about nitrous oxide is its side effect of airway irritation. Airway irritation. They don't give the they don't use this drug as much compared to nitrous oxide for the second gas effect because this drug can really irritate your airway and causes it to get really red and inflamed. So this drug has far more airway irritation than compared to, let's say, nitrous oxide when used in a second gas effect type situation. So what you need to know about halothane, halothane is one of the common drugs that's used with the second gas effect. So you would give, let's say, halothane with nitrous oxide or halothane with desflurane. But most of the time, like I said, because of the airway irritation, it's going to be nitrous oxide and halothane or nitrous oxide and sevoflurane. And there's a lot of other ones you can give. The problem with halothane is it causes hepatotoxicity in really high concentrations. Hepatotoxicity. On top of hepatotoxicity, halothane causes what's known as an epinephrine sense, increased epinephrine sensitivity. An increased epinephrine sensitivity. So, and it's particular at the heart, in cardiac muscle. And this can lead to a situation of arrhythmia. Because the response that epinephrine can cause, if at such a such a really high dose, it can cause arrhythmias and it can cause a really high increase in blood pressure and whatnot. But particularly at the cardiac muscle, because when you're on halothane, you you seem to have a more sen you're more sensitive to this epinephrine that's in the body. You are very prone to arrhythmias at high levels. So keep that in mind. Increase epinephrine sensitivity with arrhythmia and halothane. I want to go ahead and write this one in isoflurane. The hepatotoxicity issue isn't really there for isoflurane, but the increased epinephrine, I'm just going to put epi, sensitivity is there as well. And again, it could lead to arrhythmia, among other things, but you need to know arrhythmia on the heart. So isoflurane and halothane, these two drugs are epi sensitivity. Methoxyflurane, all you need to know is this is extremely nephrotoxic. So you try to avoid this one. Enflurane, also nephrotoxic. Enflurane is nephrotoxic because of its metabolized breakdown product, uh, the fluoride ions. Okay? The fluoride, the fluoride, oops, excuse me, the fluoride ions. 
So, uh, also with enflurane, it has a history of causing seizures at really high levels. Okay, so let's go back through this one more time. This is really what you need to know for the inhaled anesthetics. You need to know these, you need to be able to know their side effects and, and know about the second gas effect with nitrous oxide being the main one to use, commonly paired with halothane or sevoflurane. I didn't put that on the list because there's not much to say about it, but sevoflurane. Sevoflurane is commonly paired with nitrous oxide being that second gas to assist um, with the effects to allow sevoflurane to act better. I go into more detail uh, in all of that in another video, diffusion hypoxia and the second gas effect. You can check it out on my channel. Let's get to a question. A 39-year-old female patient got into a car accident and presents to the ER with neck pain. Upon examination, a vertebral fracture of the atlas vertebra is detected and surgery is required. So that's one of the top two uh, vertebrae. Remember the atlas and the axis. The patient is put under anesthesia. Okay, the patient, that's what we need to know for this question. The patient is put under anesthesia and the operation begins as planned. But 10 minutes later, breathing becomes irregular and the doctor realized that they missed a pneumothorax. They missed a pneumothorax injury from the car accident that went unrecognized before the surgery. So the pneumothorax injury was, was exacerbated by after the anesthesia state. So the anesthesia, whatever anesthetic they give, uh, they gave, it made it worse, the pneumothorax, and now the respiratory problems became. So which of the following drugs most likely exacerbated the pneumothorax? Remember I said, I'll let you think about it for 10 or 20 seconds, and then I'll go ahead and uh, let you know what the answer is. Okay, so if you're not ready, you can pause the video and think about it some more, but I'll go ahead and go into the explanation. So pneumothorax, right here, that has become increased, increased a problematic pneumothorax. Remember, I said that pneumothorax is under that situation of a closed, a closed air compartment. You have now have this closed air, a new air compartment where the air can be trapped inside the body. Um, from the pneumothorax injury that happened from this patient's car accident. Doctors didn't realize that after the anesthetic, it's become worse. And that is common with the uh, important side effect I said to know for nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide causes an increased uh, expansion of these closed air compartments. One example being pneumothorax. Another example being uh, certain compartments in the eye in some pathologic conditions um, where you go on nitrous oxide and it can expand that air compartment and interfere with vision and then can lead to temporary or permanent blindness. So nitrous oxide is the answer. Let's go through and see if you can remember some of the other side effects and important things. Halothane, H for hepatotoxicity. That'll help you remember that. Halothane, hepatotoxic. Also halothane, remember it has the epinephrine sensitivity. And that leads to arrhythmias, remember? It can lead to arrhythmias because it becomes extremely sensitive. Your body will become more sensitive to the epinephrine, and it's specifically really at the myocardium. And this can lead to arrhythmia specifically. Enflurane, I said it was nephrotoxic, right? Nephrotoxic. And it's nephrotoxic because of the fluoride ion um, metabolic breakdown product. And with... Um, Let's see. Oh, and also seizures. Remember, I said that the patient is prone to seizures with enflurane. So enflurane is kind of dangerous to use. Methoxyfluorine, very nephrotoxic. That's what you need to know for that one. Desflurane, remember, airway irritation is the primary uh, side effect. Haloperidol, that's not even in this category. But uh, just as a reminder, haloperidol is acting under those drugs that are the D2 antagonist, the typical uh, D2 antagonist, haloperidol. And then uh, propofol, that's in another video I'll cover. This is actually a an IV anesthetic. So this could not be the answer because the patient was given, uh, they, this is an IV anesthetic and this, it doesn't really have too many negative side effects other than some, if, if the patient were to be allergic to it, or, and it actually has a positive feature, I'll go ahead and just tell you now, it's antiemetic. So it doesn't cause you to throw up like a lot of the other ones that do. It kind of resists uh, the vomiting. And this is an IV anesthetic. And we're, we're more talking about the inhaled anesthetic, specifically the, 
because of the exacerbation of the pneumothorax injury. So this wouldn't be applied here. And then sodium theopental, that's another IV anesthetic. So I always learn when you come, when you come across terms you've never heard before, it's probably not the answer. So you can go ahead and mark these out. This is also an IV anesthetic. And sodium theopental actually is a barbiturate. It's a short-acting barbiturate. So if you remember anything about barbiturates, then you'll know um, some of the side effects and how barbiturates work. So this is just a quick little video. I didn't really go into too much detail on the mechanism of action of a lot of these, but I can go ahead and sum that up really fast. All of the drugs with fluorine are GABA A potentiators. Remember what else is a GABA A potentiator? So this is GABA A involving the chloride. So you know GABA binds to the GABA A receptor at the postsynaptic membrane and the GABA A receptor causes that chloride influx and efflux depending on binding or not. And the two drugs that also act as GABA A potentiators, one of them is barbiturates, and barbiturates uh, increase the duration of the GABA A channel being open to allow chloride ions to go th freely through. And benzodiazepines is the other one. And benzodiazepines also is a GABA A potentiator, but instead of changing the duration of the channel being open, the benzodiazepines changes the frequency. I mean, so it'll open and close faster at a, and so it allowing thus allowing more chloride ions. So all of the fluoranes, fluorane, see, and fluorane, methoxyfluorane, desflurane, also, uh, halothane falls under that too. I know that's in, that isn't fluorine, but the thane is there, so that's kind of the same thing. The, these are all GABA A potentiators, okay? And I said haloperidol was acting as a D2 antagonist. That's involved with um, antipsychotic drugs, and I have a video on that you can check out on my channel. Um, so basically, that sums up. We'll go into detail on the IV anesthetics on another video. Um, and we'll get back and we'll jump back into some more topics involving anesthetics. I see another video guys. Bye.